Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on that uh, really speaks to a, how much things have changed is, you know, you, you see uh, Cheers now and it's, it's replayed, you know, all over the world constantly. And what I always appreciate is it has a theme song. And not only does it have a theme song, it has one of the best theme songs ever, but it is no quick affair. You know, it is a real theme song. Um, I think it charted too. I think it was up at the top of the charts, that song, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Everybody well, knows your name? It was going to the top, except uh, Billie Jean came out <laughs> in 1982. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I couldn't moonwalk. <laughs> 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 but I was thinking about it. I was thinking about my, so much of my uh, childhood affection is revolves around these theme sh- theme songs. You know the the Get Smart theme song, uh, Hawaii Five O, um, uh, F Troop. You know, <laughs> seem, I mean that's what an amazing, but just that would tell a story and an, am- an amazing music in these orchestras, Wild Wild West, just incredible theme songs. And you think about. Today they're gone because you can't spend the time. No. A show has to start immediately. You can barely show the title of the show, and that's about it. Yeah, because if you have a theme song, it takes away from content, and uh, uh, you can't do it anymore. Again, Cheers said, we had 26 minutes to tell a tale. Now you only have 21 and a half minutes, so there's no time for a theme song. That's, that's, you know, the theme song is, uh, that tells the whole story of that show. That was, it was written by Gary Portnoy and Judy Hart Angelo. Judy is the, was, uh, is the wife or is the widow of John Angelo, who's my close friend, mm-hmm. who was an investment banker and wrote me, uh, called me and said, his wife is done raising kids. She wants to go back to music writing. Can she send you a song for your show? And so that was a song they sent. And you guys said, knew right away when you heard oh that song. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. And the ly- you know, if you, if you Google it, the lyrics that were originally written are really funny lyrics. Mm-hmm. But we, we couldn't do it. You can't do a funny lyrics every week, uh, right. you know, right. so that we made them more generic. But it's, it's a wonderful song that encapsulates that show perfectly. So people for years now have been saying, well, the sitcom is dead. And I know that they've said that repeatedly uh, off and on for 40 years. You're not buying it. Uh, me? Yeah, you're not, uh, you don't buy that it's, that it's over for the uh, traditional sitcom. Well, I've, I've, uh, I've dressed in a dark suit about four times for the death of sitcom. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> uh, and every time I've gotten to the funeral, they've closed the casket. Right. So I'm a little concerned now. This is the first time. <clears throat> and I don't know why studios aren't doing it anymore or networks aren't doing it anymore or even streamers are not doing it anymore it's economical mm-hmm. it's funny the audiences love it they watch they watch all these shows and reruns so i don't know i have no um reason why it is declining so much yeah i you know i've i've listened to people try to explain it and i can't explain it <clears throat> but uh Selfishly, I was there for a golden age of television yeah. when it was when it was king. So uh, I'm sad now that it's uh, there are very few. There's like the neighborhood, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Cedric the Entertainer show, and mm-hmm. uh, <coughs> Chuck Lorre has uh, Bob Hart's Abishella. Mm-hmm. But I don't know any other sitcoms. You know, I had this thought a couple of years ago maybe more than a couple of years ago but it was um around the time that you know people were wondering well what's going on with the the multi-camera sitcom in front of a live audience and i started to wonder if there's a generation i'm thinking about my kids that have come of age watching single camera no no laughs single camera and that it becomes and and maybe this comes from reality television that it's inculcated in them that that's the real world, that a proscenium, people making entrances and there being applause is not the real world, but the world is portrayed in the office that looks more like a documentary and looks more like a lot of the content that they've grown up with feels more real to them and authentic. 
Uh, maybe, but Friends is still the most popular show. Yeah. It's, you know, and that's in front of a live audience. So <clears throat> I'm not sure why. Yeah. I'm not sure, you know, you need one great sitcom, but I haven't seen it come down the pike yet.